Hello and welcome. Let's keep working on our program and send in, well, let's set up a descriptor which lets us describe resources and then send in some resources to describe a camera. Um, as always, it's a good idea to just fire this up, give it a dry run and check that it is working. So if we need to, we'll select interpreter, we'll give it a go. And yeah, that's what we expect. We're seeing things. That's nice. So all good. There's going to be a few steps here and there's going to be a bit of back and forth, but hopefully it will conceptually tie together. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to our frame object and for our frame, we want to also hold the the data structures which are going to be used in rendering a frame, including a uniform buffer object. And it is a good approach to create a simple class to hold the data so that we can query that, we can work with that, because there's going to be a few representations of this data. There's going to be the, what I call the semantic representation where we can see, oh yeah, this is a vector, this is what we can do with it. And there's going to be a serialized representation where it's sort of flattened and bounced down to a buffer so that it can be sent over to the to the graphics card. So let's start with this stuff. So we'll go, okay. Um, now, even though I'm definitely going to be overwriting these every frame, I do want to set them with reasonable um, data types just to make it clear semantically what these things are and what operations we can do with them. So I'm going to have view projection and then I'm going to have a view projection which will be the pre-multiplied view and projection matrices that will just take a lot of the load off of the vertex buffer. So um, I can go down to the swap chain frame and we can say, okay, um, let's say, give them uh, an instance called camera data. So we've got that, we've got that set up. Now in preparation for it, let's go to the shaders and I'll just specify, I'll write down the, um, we'll update the shader. So I'll say, okay, We'll have a resource bound at binding index zero. That will be a uniform. The struct type, I'm going to declare, I'll call it a UBO, and it will have the same thing. So it'll have a view projection matrix and a view projection matrix. And the specific instance of this, it's going to be called camera data. This doesn't have to match up with what the um, what the Python file says, but it's nice. So let's do that anyway. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the view projection and multiply it in there. So we'll see some things going on. Now we can pop over, pop over to the shaders. There we are. Um, just get rid of the original shaders, recompile the old shaders, and yep, that's come through. Awesome. So the shader is done. Now the job is how do we get that data to the shader? Well, one thing we note, if we, so this was running before, if we go and try to run this now, it's not good. It's, uh, it's really not good. Yeah, and um, it complains that, well, I mean, yeah, it's complaining that, hey, you've given me this shader and I'm looking at this shader and this shader says that we should expect a resource bound at binding number zero. But you've told me when we created the pipeline that there was no descriptor set. Well, there has to be a descriptor set if a descriptor is bound. 
if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create something called a descriptor set and I'm going to save that in the engine class and I'm going to use that in the pipeline creation and specify that. So this is the first time we've worked with descriptors so we'll make a new file, we'll call this descriptors and we'll just do a bunch of imports Now, just as I do with a lot of my construction functions, I'll make a class to hold the um, data fields which are needed in construction. And I'm going to future proof myself a little bit here. At the moment, really, really, we're just um, passing in really basic data. But I'm going to say, well, in the future, we'll have a whole bunch of descriptors that will be involved in a descriptor set. So let's set this up so that it takes, it's generic programming, it takes a whole list of parameters and um, we can work with that. So we'll have the number of um, bindings which we're going to do in the descriptor set, the indices of those bindings, the types of each of the descriptors involved in the sets, the counts. So for instance, if I have, I don't know, I'll use the same example as my pre, as my C++ version. Um, if I have 10 uniform buffers, then I'll say, hey, um, this is starting at binding number zero. It's a uniform buffer and I'm declaring 10 of them, something like that. Um, but we also need to specify which stages those descriptors are involved in. But yeah, that is basically all the information I'll need to create a descriptor set layout. Okay, so what I'm going to need to do is there's a Vulkan structure called a descriptor set layout binding. I know this is getting a bit the names sort of clash with each other, but this is how it is. And I'm going to populate a whole list of those. So I'll start with a blank list. And then I'm going to loop through. So I'll say, okay, for I. Now just put this in. This is from the Vulcan documentation describing the data fields. the data fields which are involved in a descriptor set layout binding. I know, it's a mouthful. So all of these really need to be set. So we'll go, okay, let's make a layout binding. And we'll set these as the arguments for the function. So I'll say, all right, the binding number is, um, if we look at the bindings, and the binding indices for object I. So there we have it. Just give Python linting a second to catch up. As you can see, we are popping through and setting each of these. What do you mean not defined? Come on. There we go. Okay. So this is, um, yeah, setting the fields of the struct up above. So we've got that created. We can append that to the list of all the bindings. So we'll go layout, that one. And then down below, we can use that. So now it's the job to create the layout or descriptor set layout. So again, from the documentation, these are the things that we need to set. It's pretty straightforward, so we can go, okay, um, make layout info. Now I'll just hover over this for a second. So as always, see, I don't know why it does this, this sort of double, there we go. Okay, right, so um, the structure type has a default value, that's fine. The next pointer has a default value, that's fine. Um, as do the flags, I guess. 
So really what we need to set is the, uh, let's set the binding count. We don't need to, but let's also set the, the pointer to the bindings. Okay, so, um, so if you look in the, the documentation here for binding count, if binding count is set to none, it will just take the length of the list which is passed in for pointer bindings. But um, let's do this anyway. So bindings count and then um, pointer to the bindings. There we go. It'll just take the list and work with that. So now we can go ahead and create the descriptor set layout and um, if we go, let's go Vulcan create this one and control click into that. There we go. Um, we can see here that if this fails, it will raise some sort of exception. So what I'll do is I'll put this in a try accept uh, block. Okay, cool. So hopefully this should work. We can close this down and say, all right, now we have a function which will create a descriptor set layout for us. Let's use that. So we'll go to the engine. And like we're saying, we need to do this before we make the pipeline. So we'll go, um, We should also import the descriptors module. And now I'll just pop down right before we make the pipeline and we'll work here. Okay, so we'll create the bindings structure class and fill that out. Okay, so there we have it at this point. We can see here very clearly we have one descriptor. It is index zero. It is of type uniform buffer. There's just one of it again. Um, and it is it is bound to the vertex buffer. I'm sorry, the vertex shader module. So then we can create the descriptor set layout. So we'll go. Okay, so for this we just need to specify the device and the bindings. Okay, so that is fine. We can close that. And now I want to I want to add this into my input bundle. So I'm just gonna throw in an extra argument here. I'll say um, Yeah, pass that in there. And then I'll go over to the pipeline function and set it up so that it actually accepts that argument. So I'll add this in. That is a And one thing we can do is we go down to oh, don't worry about that. This swap chain input <clears throat> uh, oh no, not that nor that. Okay, this input bundle, we can specify um, what type of instance it is. Um, that is an instance of the input bundle, and that makes it more semantic in the code completion down below. Um, alrighty, so we're going to have the device, and then I'm also going to set accept a layout and specify this down below. So we have, okay, set layout count is one and the pointer to the set. I just hover over that to check I've got those names correct. I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, yep, 
pointer to set layouts. Yep, okay, cool. So then I'll go down in the create graphics pipeline, right down to the bottom where we set the, geez, this is a big function. There we go, okay. There we go. How long does it take to lint this stuff? All right, so um, we'll head back to the engine and it's probably a good idea in the cleanup to destroy that, um, that layout. Not that it matters, it's the end of the program, but it's good practice. So just going off the way the other functions are going, uh, just hover over here, check that we've got that. Okay, yep, so, oh, come on. So the device, the set layout, and the allocator. Okay, cool. All right, so let's give that a go. Before we were getting just a white screen because it was erroring out. Now we're at least getting the background. But um, yeah, as you can see, we're getting a bunch of errors. So that is because it's saying, okay, fine. I've got the layout and everything. That is all good, but you're not using the layout. You're not binding anything to this descriptor set. So that's where we're going to start working on. So yeah, the next stage after this is, yep, we've got a frame. Let me go back here. We've got a frame and this frame has the semantic stuff but we also need to bounce that down into Vulcan stuff. And I'm just gonna organize this a little bit before I go on. So if we look at these resources, there's a whole bunch of them. It's a good idea to probably organize them. So these first three are involved in working on the swap chain. The command buffer pretty much is self-explanatory. Um, the next three are for synchronization. And then these other ones are going to be, I'll call them so I'm going to need a buffer. Uh, if we look at the, um, the memory uh, module, I have a, a buffer object in there. I'm going to need one of those. I'm also going to, um, when I write the data, it's common to map a memory location, write to that and then unmap it. But I'm going to hold, I'm going to map it for the lifetime of the object. So I'm going to hold a reference to the right location as well. So I'll go. Okay, so I'll just declare that there. And then down below, I'm going to write a function to create those resources. So I'll call this um, make UBO, Uniform Buffer Object Resources. Because I'm allocating some memory, I'll need a handle to both the logical and physical device. Okay, so I'm going to create the buffer size. Now there are some things we can do, but I'm just gonna work it by hand. So I, I think to myself, all right, we have three matrices. Each matrix is a four by four, so it has 16 entries, and each entry is a float, so it has four bytes. So that's the number of bytes I need to allocate for the buffer. Um, I'll create the buffer creation struct. All right, so these are essentially specifying that um, this is memory mapped IO. So we can write to it from the CPU and when we write to it, it is synchronized with the GPU. We don't have to um, signal that explicitly. Okay, so, um, and we'll set the size and the usage. then we can go ahead and create the buffer. Okay, then what we need to do <clears throat> is get a handle to the, like map it to memory 
so it sits there and get a handle to where we should write to. So there we have it. Um, that maps um, to that range. <clears throat> so if we write anything, move anything to this memory location, that will get sent to the graphics card. So that's good. Now let's call that. So just close that down and we'll go to... And if we look through these functions, we have all of these. Uh, where are we? Yeah, so if we look at this, this is a good candidate function here. We look at this frame synchronization objects and what is it doing? It's looping through all the frames and it's setting some things on each frame. So that's a great point at which to um, to jump in and, and merge that together. So I'm just going to call this make frame resources. Now we could merge this a little bit more. We could make the command buffers in there as well. I don't know, we'll just leave this for now. And we also won't change the doc string, but that's fine. And I'll just go, okay. So where is that being called? That is that is being called in finalize setup. So just go down there, change that, update the name, okay. And it's also being called when the swap chain is being recreated. So we'll, yeah, make that one as well. Okay, so again, there's a lot of back and forth. So it turns out, well, actually, let me not do that just yet. I'll just go ahead and I think we can do this. So we can go, um, okay, this is annoying me that it doesn't recognize the data type, but that's, that's okay. Right, so <clears throat> we've got that, that should be working, um, but then we need to create, mm, well, wait, wait a second, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's a good idea to do this as we think of it. Um, as well as creating these, we need to free them up. So we can go back here <clears throat> under this point, and there are three steps. First of all, we need to unmap that memory that we mapped to. Then once that memory has been unmapped from, it can be freed. And then finally, the, um, the buffer object can be destroyed. Okay, right, so now I want to start looking at descriptors. So I've got a resource, right? I've got, um, oh, wait a second. Mm. Now let's do this first, let's do this first. Okay, so I've got a, I've got a resource, this uh, class that I can write its data to, and then I've got a uniform buffer that I can write from one to the other. Um, so that's all good, but I need to describe that. I need a descriptor set. And in order to have a descriptor set, I'll need to allocate it from a descriptor pool. So what do we have? Make pipeline, maybe, yeah, maybe after making the pipeline. Actually, I changed my mind. I changed my mind because probably the best point to do it is before I create all of the um, descriptor sets. So it'll be in here somewhere. So let's pop over to the descriptors and I'll just, I'll go ahead, I'll make both of the descriptor pool functions. One of them is to create the descriptor pool and the other one is to allocate a descriptor set from a descriptor pool.
Okay, so um, a descriptor set needs to know how many, ah, sorry, a descriptor pool needs to know how many things are going to be allocated from it. And those things depend on what type of thing they are. So um, I guess the simplest way to say it, good to go back to the previous example, is let's say we have 10 uniform buffers, but then as well as that, we have three um, image views or something. So we'd say, all right, we'll have one object tracking the size of the uniform buffers, another object tracking the size of the image views, and then take that all together and use that to create the pool. So this will be a little similar to the descriptor set layout that we were constructing before in the sense that we have a single list and we fill it in with, with um, structs. Now I have pulled in this binding class, but I'm really gonna just be using the types list. So if we look in here, just bring in the, the documentation. We have a struct called a pool size. And this is what we're going to be creating. So we'll say, okay, pool size is, we'll make a pool size. And um, yeah, we need to specify the type and descriptor count. So the type, just that one there. And the descriptor count will be that size parameter that we put in before. So the way this works is let's say we have one uniform buffer because we do just have one uniform buffer, but then we have three frames in our swap chain. Well, then we're going to need to allocate three uniform buffers essentially. So that's what this is doing. It's a little dodgy because at the moment this will only really work for um, for descriptors, which there's only one of them, but um, that's fine. That's most cases. So, or at least for this little demo scene. So then I need to create a, a pool create info. I'll just pull this in. It's um, Again, it's pretty straightforward. So again, S type has a default. All this has default. What I need to set is the pool size. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, pool size count. And that's the number of pool size objects that I'm throwing in. Again, little deceptive, I guess, but um, we'll just query the number of things we have in the pool sizes um, list. Then we'll pass that list in and then the maximum number of sets, which can be allocated from the pool. And then I'll go through the try accept block to create the descriptor pool. There we have it that will create a descriptor pool. Now, what we need to do with that <clears throat> is also allocate descriptor sets from it. So I'll go ahead and write the general function, which will do that. Okay, so I'll just bring in <clears throat> from the documentation, this is a struct called descriptor set allocation info. We need to um, know which pool we're allocating from, how many descriptor sets we want to allocate. And then we also need to know um, which descriptor set layout do each of them need to conform to. So it's possible to allocate, let's say seven descriptor sets, but for them to each can form to different layouts, if that makes sense. There we go. So 
pretty straightforward. Oh, oh. I think I might have written descriptor pool allocate info. That's uh whoops. Alrighty, so we'll do the the try accept block. And this will return a list, so we'll just grab the first thing there. Okay, cool. So um, we'll go to the frame. And in the frame, we will create some Okay, so the uniform buffer descriptor is actually quite a lightweight um, structure. We can set that up right now in the UBO resources. I'll bring this over. It's just a simple high level description of a uniform, uh, sorry, of a, of a buffer. So we can go, okay. Now this is super important. I get caught on this a bit. Um, the uniform buffer, although it's, I've called it a buffer, it's really a, um, a wrapper around a buffer in the memory. So we need to extract the buffer from that. So we have the offset um, to start describing from, and we'll start from the start. And the range is the size that we're describing. That's the whole thing. So we'll go buffer size, and that's it. So, yeah, okay, so let's leave the descriptor set for now, and I'll go back to the engine, and I will make the um, descriptor pool, and then allocate a descriptor set for each frame. Okay, so now that the um, descriptor pool has been created, we can allocate those. So we can go, okay, frame. Okay, now as far as cleaning things up, the only bit of this that we need to clean up is the descriptor pool and the descriptor sets are owned by it. So they will automatically be cleaned up there. So we can just go to um, clean up swap chain and then after all of this we can destroy it. Yep, okay, good. All right, so finally we're, we're getting there. Something I put off for a little bit is the um, the function of getting the frame and writing to its um, yeah writing to its its matrices and then writing those to its uniform buffer. So let's set that up now. Okay, so the first part of this should pretty much make sense. Uh, we'll go, I should probably import frame. And the reason I'm importing frame is so that I can um, get the semantic parsing here. So this is just grabbing a reference right at the start and saying, hey, I expect this to be an instance of this um, swap chain frame. So then I know which um, functions I have available to me. So now I'll, I'll do the work of setting up a um, view and projection matrix.
Okay, cool. So um, I've just made a little little edit here um, with this uh, projection matrix because it's built for OpenGL. Um, we can swap around this certain element and that um, just changes the, the projection parameter. Now, um, just a side note, you can see that it says here this code is unreachable, even though it obviously is. I'm not really sure why that is. It says here no return, but then when I control click on this function, it says nothing about that. It just randomly stops here. So I really don't know what's going on here, but there is a way to fix this. And that is we can go up the top, go to view, command palette, and then open workspace settings, the JSON file. We've got nothing in here right now. What we can do is bring in this bit of code. It says, um, yeah, just setting this with the linter. So then if we pop back, we can see that all that code is highlighted. It's just annoying. It's just annoying. So, all right. All well and good. We've got the view and the projection set. Now we can multiply them to create the view projection. There we go. So now what I need is I need to compress this all together into one representation. There's a um, a few ways to do this, but if you think about it, what is a struct? Ideally, a struct is a whole set of, uh, I guess, four matrices, and they're right after the other. So if you were to stick them together, you could view them as a 48 float thing. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this, this variable called flattened data, data not fata. And I'll, I'll take these fields one by one. So I'll take the frame camera data's view matrix. I'll get this as type um, float to bytes. And this will create a bytes object, which is a, it's really a string. It's a string with raw data. And one of the good things about strings is we can add them together. So uh, plus the projection, plus the view projection. Now, um, I mean, this is it. If we were working with other data types, such as, okay, so if we go to the shader right now and look at this, this is what I would call a pretty nice struct because everything's in mat four, which is nicely aligned. If we had a float, for instance, uh, float extra, then we would probably have uh, probably another three floats of padding would automatically be added. So if we were to do uh, something like this, we would have to also add some extra padding. Another approach would be to take those take those uh, matrices, append them together into one big array, bounce it down, I guess, to a, a 1 by 48 or something, and then send that in. But anyway, this seems to work. So all that remains is to move that memory. So if we go, just calculate the buffer size on the fly, we have, again, um, three matrices, 16 floats each, four bytes per float. Okay, then we have this foreign function interface memory move function. The destination we're moving to is the frames Yeah, uniform buffer right location. The source that we're copying from, copying there, is the data. And the number of bytes we're moving is given by buffer size. So that's it. 
Now, if you're wondering which library this is, this is actually included in the Vulkan binding. We can control click in there. It's in this Vulkan cache.py and um, this is just some sort of machine generated thing. What does that actually look like? Yeah, it's just a raw sort of binary object, which was um, taken from somewhere, who knows, but um, we can use it. All right, so what this is doing is this is sort of writing to, if we go back to the frame, again, if we were able to see this every frame, we would see that, that the, uh, the contents of this um, uniform buffer are now changing every frame. And this uniform buffer is described, but the descriptor set has not been written to and the descriptor set has not been bound. So those are some things we need to work on. Just quickly before we do that, um, we'll just go down to the, the render function and maybe right down here before we record the draw commands, let's just go prepare that frame. Let's give that a second. There we go, okay, cool. So, um, where was I? Right, writing to the descriptor set. So let's do that. So in order to write to a descriptor set, we need uh, something called a, uh, <laughs> Very, imaginative, very imaginatively called a Vulcan write descriptor set, which is a structure which um, defines a writing operation. Okay, then we call this update descriptor sets function, and that takes the write operation, there could be more than one of them, and goes ahead and performs them. Okay, cool. So then we can go to the prepare frame function. And right at the end of that, after we've done that, we instruct the frame to write to its descriptor set. So now not only have we got the, the buffer written to, but the descriptor set has been written to as well. So. Finally, we can go to the record draw commands and then just, that doesn't matter. Just after we begin the render pass, we can bind the descriptor set. We're only binding it once for the whole frame. It doesn't change. So that's, uh, that's all right. Something like that. So here we have, yeah, we're binding the descriptor set. Later on, as we create more things, for instance, we'll have um, various textures. We'll need to bind those on the fly. So yeah, anyway, so this is all set up. Let's give this a go and have a look. All right, so. Still not working, but we're not getting any error uh, messages. So maybe we'll do a bit of fiddling around here. So I'll just close this down. We'll go to the engine 
and where are we? Prepare frame. So what we could do <clears throat> is I'm just set this. So I'll just take the frame camera data view projection and I'll set that to this is a good idea just to check that the matrix is going in. Um, so just set the identity. Pass that in. See how that's um, handling it. Okay, so that's working. So the matrix is coming in just fine. Maybe it's just something about the convention of the matrix. So this is a case where we do a whole lot of whole lot of fiddling around. And I found that I could fix it by swapping the Z direction and saying, well, well Z is, is the down direction. And some of that could be that I have declared the, the vertices in the wrong order. So we could go back to the swap chain creation. Well, two options. Option one is go back to the swap chain creation and check the, um, change the, the winding order of the vertices in the I think it's the input construction or something, input assembly. Um, another approach is to go to the raw vertex data and reverse the, the order. Um, and another approach is to just change the, <laughs> change the directions. So we can give this a go, and there we have it. We're looking down on our stuff. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, that's going to be it for today. In a future video, there's a few things we can do here. In a future video, I'm going to make a storage buffer so that instead of sending these positions in one at a time, that's what's really killing this frame rate. Instead of doing that, we'll declare a whole bunch of positions up front and then refer to them in the shader. And then after that, I'm going to create textures. So we'll have a different texture for each of these objects. And for most purposes, that's most of the, the fun stuff of Vulcan. Um, anyway, so hope you had fun, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.